What is up all you aesthetic people? It's Fresh, back with another video. I hesitate to put out another Entitled Parent so quickly, but hey, you guys ask and I respond. It's what you the people want, and I hope you like the episode. Daycare is over. Get out. As both a nanny and having a mom that runs a home daycare, I have come across quite a few Entitled Parents. My mom has a lot of cool toys and playground equipment, which is great because it keeps the kids entertained. Of course, at the end of the day, it can be hard to get them to leave, which I understand. Kids will be kids, and especially for one to four year olds, it can be hard to change activities. Most parents are great about gathering their kids and leaving. One parent was not as great. Entitled Child was an okay kid. She whined a bit more than normal kids, the type that didn't like it when other kids were at the center of attention. That was nothing unusual, but she definitely felt like the rules didn't apply to her. She was three when all this started. Her mom would come to pick her up, and Entitled Child wouldn't stop playing. EM, or Entitled Mom, would stand there and let her play. My mom didn't want to start anything the first few times, so she allowed it to go on as she didn't have any plans. But then it got to be excessive, and soon on, the nights she did have plans, it was like herding sheep. Then, one day, my mom had to drop off one of the other kids and told Entitled Mom she was leaving, which gave Entitled Mom the hint. My mom took the kid she was driving home inside to gather her stuff and then came back outside. Entitled Child and her Entitled Mother were still in the playground area, the daughter still on the equipment. My mom, I'm sorry, but I have to go now. We'll see you tomorrow. Entitled Mom, oh, well, you were still here, so we figured we had more time. My mom, Sorry, but I've got to get this child here home, so goodbye, we'll see you tomorrow. Entitled Mom, slightly irritated. Fine, turns to Entitled Child. EC, it's time to go. Entitled Child, I'm not ready to go yet. Entitled Mom gave my mom a look like, what can you do? And my mom gave her a similar look that said, tough. Entitled Mom was clearly upset that it didn't work and had to grab hold of EC, forcing her to leave. Entitled Child started crying. After that, things got better, but you could tell that Entitled Mom was not happy that her little princess was told she had to leave. It's like how little kids sometimes think that their teachers just live at school, except that one little girl grew up still believing this and then had a kid of her own, only to be surprised that her childcare provider might, in fact, have things to do outside of caring for her kid. Entitled Couple Push Me Out of the Way, Then Dump Their Kids With Me I've been planning to move to the UK for a while, I'm going in a few months, so I didn't go for my full driver's license. This means that I walk or take the bus everywhere. Now, I live in a small town near the bottom of the South Island of New Zealand. Every month, the town has a food market in one of the supermarket car parks. So tonight, I made the 45 minute walk from my house to the market to get some loaded fries. They're pretty amazing. Once I got there, I had to wait 20 minutes in line to order and 30 minutes before my order would be ready. I wasn't really bothered about this, and I managed to find myself a place to stand. About 15 to 20 minutes into the wait, I noticed someone walk up right in front of me. It isn't a large town, so I assumed it was someone I knew and looked up. Spoiler, it wasn't someone I knew. Q Entitled Mum, EM, and Entitled Dad, ED. ED and EM stare at me. Me, I'm awkwardly staring back. Entitled Dad, still staring at me. Isn't that a great spot for a pram? Keep in mind that by this time the large crowd of people waiting for their food had thinned down and there was plenty of room for Entitled Mom and Entitled Dad to find a place to stand. Entitled Mom begins to slowly push her pram forwards, nudging me in the knee. I decide it's not worth making a scene over and move to the side. I think that the issue is over and start to forget about it. Entitled Mom pulls out my earphone, watch my kids. Entitled Mom then leaves, her husband following her and I'm left with two toddlers. The kids just stare at me and I'm staring back at them. We're all confused and I'm definitely pissed. I'm not exactly the most trustworthy looking woman at this moment. I'm wearing oversized men's clothes and I'm covered in paint. I've just gotten back from painting the rooms in my house. Not to mention I'm lacking makeup and my hair is greasy. I'm a mess, I'm stressed, and now I've got these two toddlers stuck with me. My number gets called and I grab my chips, but I know better than to leave the kids alone. I don't eat because I know that if I do, then these kids will want some too. They're already eyeing up my box as I go back to join them. 10 minutes pass, then 15. It's now 7.30pm and I have no bloody clue where the parents are. At 8, the parents finally come back. They don't thank me, they just leave. 
I finally open my chips and they're cold. I'm so pissed off that I drop the box of chips in the bin and just walk home. I know that it seems ridiculous, but this story is just specific enough to be true. It doesn't have a happy ending, it doesn't involve demon spawn children and a parent fervently defending them, it's just a case of an entitled parent truly believing that the world revolves around them. It's just a parent taking advantage of a likely inconspicuous looking young adult and using the person's goodwill and common sense responsibility against them. OP, I'm sorry about the chips, and I hope you have access to plenty more when you get to the UK. Work colleagues plus one ruins my wedding because I didn't give her kids cupcakes. So this happened a few days ago, and as the title suggests, me and my partner had our wedding on the anniversary of the day we met. Everything was set up to be perfect, etc, etc. As part of our guest list, we invited our work colleagues with everyone getting a plus one. One of my coworkers, who we'll call John, let me know a few weeks ago that he was going to bring his new girlfriend to the wedding. It was a bit last minute, but as one of our other guests had recently cancelled, I figured it'd be fine. Big mistake. At our reception, our wedding favors were cupcakes in a little box with a handwritten thank you note. As they were the favors, there was one at each place setting, and therefore one for each person. Next to the head table, we also had a smaller table where we had our wine close by and a ferris wheel cupcake holder filled with enough cupcakes for us to each have one as the bridesmaids and groomsmen also got additional favors. The first course hadn't even started before a woman holding a toddler and being followed by a young child, none of which I had ever seen, approaches the head table. EM is entitled mother, EB, the entitled 4-6 to six year old son this woman has trailing behind her, me is me, and J is my partner. Entitled mom, excuse me? She's wearing a black top and skirt, and as the service staff's uniform is just formal black attire, most were wearing differing clothes, and I straightaway presume she was a waiter or something trying to find the children's parents. Me, hi, yes? Entitled mom, there aren't enough cupcakes. I'm obviously taken aback by this. Me, I I'm sorry, what? Entitled mom, I said there aren't enough cupcakes. Me, what do you mean? Entitled mom, you're two cupcakes short, my kids don't have any. At this point, I'm mortified thinking that me and Jay had somehow miscounted the guests or messed up ordering the cupcakes, but I also am embarrassed because this woman's face is not ringing any bells and I feel like an asshole for not knowing who one of our guests are. Me, I'm so sorry about that, are the kids part of the plus ones? We might not have put a favor on the table if we didn't know their names. Jay quietly to me. I thought we put the plus one's boxes next to the invited person? Me, quietly back. I don't know, we must have messed up. Entitled mom. I'm the plus one. I've got my cupcake, but you didn't give my children theirs? Me, very confused. You're the plus one? Entitled mom, looking at me like I'm slow. Yes, I'm the plus one. Me, are your kids plus ones for someone else? Entitled mom. No, they're my plus ones. J. Your plus ones? Entitled mom very sarcastically. Well, obviously, they're only little kids. I couldn't exactly leave them at home, could I? Me, well, we only had enough cupcakes for one plus one. Entitled mom, but my kids need their cupcakes. The older child has spotted the cupcakes for the head table and has started walking towards it. Jay has noticed this almost immediately and gets up to cut the child off. Entitled mom looking at me and not her child. Surely you have some cupcakes for the children. Me, side-eyeing the older child. We did, but only for the kids we knew were coming, miss. Entitled mom. Well, then why didn't you know my kids were coming? Me, utterly flabbergasted by this question. We weren't told about them? Entitled mom. Well, then you should have had spare cupcakes in case of people not being able to find a babysitter. It's hard to find a babysitter with only a month's worth of notice. Me and Jay had sent out our save the dates over two years ago. Me, I'm sorry miss, but I'm not even sure who's plus one you are and I'm cut off by the older child shrieking. I look back over and Jay has picked up the boy who has one corner of the tablecloth still clenched in his grubby little hand. Jay thankfully hadn't yanked the kid away very far so only one bottle was knocked over by the kid pulling it. Entitled mom, what on earth are you doing to my child? Jay, he was pulling on the table. He was gonna pull everything off of it. I quickly rushed to my feet. One of the groomsmen who had been standing nearby had also rushed over to try and help. Entitled mom puts her toddler down and also rushes over. Entitled mom, 
put down my kid right now. What the hell are you doing? Jay, tell him to let go of the tablecloth then. He could have gotten hurt. Entitled Mom apparently then spotted our cupcake stand that was teetering dangerously with all the tablecloth pulling. Entitled Mom, there, see? He only wanted a cupcake. You're hogging them all. Me, dude, those are for the head table. They're our cupcakes. Entitled Mom, you guys are adults. You don't need cupcakes. Me, I paid for them? At this point, the groomsman is trying to pry EB's fingers off of the tablecloth as Jay tried to keep him from trashing. My maid of honor had also appeared at some point and was on the other side of the table attempting to keep the tablecloth from moving. Entitled Mom, he's just a child, what else is he meant to do? Me, not just take things that aren't his? He's old enough, haven't you taught him anything? Entitled Mom shrieks, are you trying to tell me I'm a bad mother? Me, I don't care if you are or not, your child is going to break everything. Entitled Mom, just give him a cupcake, you're being so selfish. Me, what the hell? At this point, me, Jay, Entitled Mom, my maid of honor, two groomsmen, a few other guests, and a couple of employees were crowded around our side table, all the while EB is wailing at the top of his lungs. People who weren't even in the room at the time had come rushing in to see what all the fuss is about, and I was kind of self-conscious that all my friends and family were watching me cuss out this woman, but also too angry to really care. Entitled Mom screaming and jabbing a finger at me, This is all your fault! Me, my fault? Entitled Mom, If you just let him have a cupcake, he would stop screaming. Me, why can't you control your child, you crack addict? The groomsmen finally managed to get the kid to let go of the tablecloth, and Jay hoists him up and away from the table quickly as the kid thrashes more violently and digs his nails into Jay's arm. Entitled Mom, let go of my damn child. She then rushes over to Jay, pulling on his arm, attempting to pull EB loose. The groomsmen pull her off of Jay and continue to restrain her as she now begins to thrash around screaming, let go of me, I'll have you arrested, this is assault. I'm very overwhelmed suddenly as the adrenaline wears off and I walk over to my maid of honor to try and help her fix up the table. A few more bottles had tipped and rolled off the table, but thankfully none of them had broken. All the while, Entitled Mom and EB are screaming threats and hysterics, Jay was trying to shout over at them for someone to call security or something, and then I hear someone from the other end of the room shout out, SOMEONE GET THE BABY! I turn back to try and locate the voice and find out what was happening with the baby, and watch as the tablecloth from the head table and all of the plates and decorations get pulled off and hit the floor with a terrible crash and shatter. Jay drops EB in shock, and Entitled Mom pushes the groomsmen off of her as she rushed over to the mess on the floor. The toddler is screaming as Entitled Mom tries to pull the kid out from under the tablecloth. Everyone else in the room is silent, I'm in shock, and then suddenly can't handle it anymore, and I start bawling. I have to sit down and my maid of honor grabs a napkin off of the closest table for me to try and dry my face. Entitled Mom manages to pull her child out from under the tablecloth, as far as I'm aware without a scratch. She then storms over to me and starts shouting in my face, What the hell is your issue? You could have killed my little girl. I can't respond and just start crying harder. Jay, don't you yell at my wife. It was your fault all of this happened because you can't control your own damn kids. Entitled Mom, don't you talk to me like that. This wouldn't have happened if you had just had enough cupcakes for everyone. Jay, we did have enough for everyone. You and your spawn weren't invited. There is another crash from behind the crowd. It turns out in the commotion, EB had grabbed for the cupcake stand again, this time bringing it crashing to the floor as well as another wine bottle. Around this point, security finally show up. EB starts wailing again, talking about how he wanted a cupcake. The two groomsmen go over to talk to the security guards as Jay and my maid of honor try to get me to stop crying. Entitled Mom shouting at the security guards, THEY TRIED TO KILL MY BABY! The groomsmen apparently explained the situation to the security guards, and EM, EB, and the toddler were escorted out. I don't know if the police were called, I don't know if the venue pressed charges or not, I just kind of sat there and cried while surrounded by the mess of my reception. The staff were really lovely and helped me reset the head table with new plates and glasses, and Jay helped them sweep the glass off of the floor as I couldn't bend down in my dress.
The guests who weren't in the room soon came in to see the leftovers of the mess, and a few apologized for not being there when it happened. The rest of the night was nice and what I was hoping for, but boy does the tension after that kind of incident take some time to disappear. I did not see John for the rest of the night, and I only know that EM was his plus one because some of my other colleagues informed me that she had been sitting at their table with him and had been complaining about the cupcake situation before me and Jay had even entered the room. Entitlement isn't just about feeling like you deserve something more than someone else. It's in a lot of ways an absolute lack of understanding for any problems someone else might face, or at the very least, the bizarre mindset that your wants and needs are unique to you. That in some way, even as a plus one, this wedding was about her. That the cupcakes are about her kids. No wedding is necessarily perfect, or at least not as perfect as the idea of a wedding can get built up to be in your head, but like OP said, an incident like this is going to make a noticeable impact on the atmosphere of the party. I'm glad they were able to pick up the pieces as best they could, and hey, on the bright side, they have a fairly unbeatable story to tell about their wedding. r slash choosing beggars, r slash entitled parents, having a ton of fake content. Now I do have one more story left for you guys, but before we get to that, I want to read a brief post from another user on this subreddit, and I think it sums up a lot of the issues with fake stories pretty well. Dear r slash entitled parents users, thank you for the fun times and good stories I got out of this reddit. I've laughed, I've cringed, and I've sympathized with you guys over terrible parents and their bratty kids. This was a truly wonderful reddit for the brief period I was involved. But since this is the internet, all good things must get exploited and beaten with a stick until it dies. I know that I'm not the only redditor that is sick of all the fake, mom blatantly attempts to rob me then claims I stole her, insert item here, and assaulted, molested, or harassed her. I get my stuff back in the end, she's banned from the establishment and everybody claps type stories. I'm not dumb enough to assume that people don't make up posts for karma, in fact, r slash quit your bs is one of my favorite subreddits. If you lie about a post you make and nobody finds out, good on you. As long as it's entertaining and you aren't stealing content, nobody really cares. But these posts on this sub are getting out of hand and are pretty much copy pastes of each other with the names changed. Be more original, I'm positive everyone has at least one EP in their life if they look hard enough. According to y'all, 50% of moms in the world will mug and assault strangers for luxury items for their children. I can proudly say that Brenda the suburban mom has never wrenched my phone out of my hands while screaming that her kid has good grades and deserves it more than me before accusing me of stealing her phone and then making a getaway in her soccer van while I just chuckle it off and think, I can't wait to put this on reddit. Y'all need to grow up and get creative. I don't doubt that there's a handful of psychopaths out there, but I don't believe that they exclusively target people who use reddit. This is mostly a message to vent and inform anyone who sees this and is thinking of making a fake post like this that you are actively driving redditors away from this subreddit. I'll check this again in a few months or something to see if the quality of this reddit has improved, but this is just some food for thought. Yes, fake posts are part of reddit as a whole, but a post is obviously faked as, oh, I was sitting in a restaurant on my expensive electronic device and a parent thought she could steal it from me because her child wanted it, it's just, it didn't happen and so obviously so it lacks any entertaining value. I know that I'm not perfect, but I do try to filter these posts as best I can. I read a lot before I make a video on any of these to try to see both if it's entertaining and if it's believable, and I generally think that both of the case for the post in this video and probably in the videos that precede it. So if you're gonna fake a post, at least make it interesting. That's what we're all here for anyway. Now back to your regularly scheduled content. Kid has a crush on my best friend, so her mom emails my mom and says I may be pregnant to get me to stop hanging out with her kid's crush. I was in 4th grade. So basically, in 4th grade, I was a tomboy and hung around with guys most of the time. I was always hanging out with my best friend. Let's call him Tim. So me and Tim would hang out every day after school and then walk home together since we lived really close. We would throw around a football and occasionally play soccer with some other dudes or play at the park. Entitled kid gets mad at me at school one day because I'm hanging out with Tim and she liked him. She said I'm hogging him and I'm obviously in love with him and we probably do stuff. I said, no, he's my friend and I don't hog him. If you want to hang out with him, just ask him. She hits me in my stomach and storms off. Now, I don't know what she told her mom, but two days later, my mom got an email from hers. 
It said that I have been probably partaking in sexual acts with Tim since we hang out a lot and it looks like I've been getting bigger, so there may be a possibility I was pregnant and should be forbidden from seeing Tim. My mom was shocked at the email and did ask me if I was doing sexual things with my friend, and I said no, and she believed me since I don't even know what sexual things really are yet. I haven't even gotten my period yet, so of course I wasn't pregnant. I don't know what my mom said back because she didn't tell me, she just said she handled it. Thinking about it now, she probably went crazy on the entitled parent. Isn't it amazing how EPs are willing to make themselves look crazy in order to please their kids? Also, she talked to Tim's mom and then his mom didn't let him hang out with me anymore. I guess she got what she wanted and boom, two years later, Entitled Kid and Tim were a thing. On the plus side, middle school relationships are usually about as real as our fourth grade protagonist actually being pregnant, so at least that won't last. Thank you to everyone who watched this video. Be sure to subscribe for more daily Reddit content. Drop a like if you like the video and I will see you all tomorrow. Welcome back folks to a new bonus segment I like to call What's Up With That? Today we're going to be talking about animal posts. Take a look at these titles. My dog would never do that. You don't deserve a dog. If want a dog, don't steal mine. Entitled parent steals my pet multiple times and refuses to give my dog back. Let my spoiled daughter have your dog because she wants it and she's a good student I swear. And these are only the dog related posts from the last couple hours. I mean, seriously, these range from kind of plausible to downright unbelievable, so stop using dogs to get karma and be a little more creative next time, alright?